So, so far we've used static allocation. We had X, in fact, let's go back and look at this program. Here we statically allocated X, and then we used X pointer to point to it. And so you're probably asking yourself, well, if I have X and I can use it to get to five, why do I need X pointer? So that's a very good question, very insightful. We really won't realize the power of pointers until we start studying self-referential classes, which will be the next uh, module. But what I want to do is I want to at least get rid of X and then I can use X pointer. Um, and the way that I'm going to do that is instead of statically creating an integer X and setting its value to five, I'm going to do that dynamically. So I'm going to start off by just declaring a pointer, X pointer, and assigning it to null. So again, out in memory, I have X pointer, and my pointer points to null. The new operator lets you dynamically create objects, dynamically construct objects, dynamically allocate objects. And the new operator takes some type. In this case, we're going to create an integer. And we can give it an initial value by specifying that value in parentheses. So what this is going to do, what the new operator is going to do, is it's going to go out into memory and allocate space for an integer. It's going to store in that location the value 5. And then it is going to return the address of that object in memory a lot like the address operator. So this is analogous to using the address operator on X. Since this returns an address, we can use it in an assignment and we can store that address in X pointer. Now, instead of pointing to null, X pointer will have as its value the address of where the new operator stored the integer object 5. Notice that there is no identifier for this dynamically allocated object. The only way we can get to it now is through X pointer. So if we say C out and we dereference X pointer, then the output will just be 5. Anything that we dynamically allocate, we have to dynamically deallocate or free. And the operator for doing that is called delete. And we give it a pointer. And what delete does is it destructs or deallocates the object that the pointer points to. So in this case, we're going to deallocate the integer 5. And when we do that, then X pointer will no longer point to that integer. Now, X pointer will still hold the address of where this object was. But the integer object 5 will be deallocated, it will be freed, or it will be destructed. Now the pointer, X pointer, is statically allocated, so it still resides in memory. It's important to distinguish between the pointer and the object it points to. Delete deallocates the object that the pointer points to. It does not deallocate the pointer itself. This code fragment will be in some scope. It'll be in a for loop or it will be in a method block or something like that. When we leave the scope in which we declared this pointer, then it will be deallocated. So 
X pointer is statically allocated, the integer 5 is dynamically allocated. Anything that we dynamically de anything that we dynamically allocate, we have to deallocate using the delete operator. And you know, the general rule is that for every new there must be a corresponding delete. Now it's simple in this case because here is new, we know that we're finished with uh, the integer 5 and so we can delete it. In a complex program, this gets much trickier. But the general rule is, is for every new there must be a corresponding delete and then the tricky part is at some point during the execution of the program. This also works for class objects. So let's say, for example, I have a point class. So to statically allocate a point object, I can simply use P and I will pass in 3 and 4 to the constructor, passing in 3 as x and 4 as y. Then if I want to print this object or call the print method of the object, I simply do that. Now in terms of memory, I have this object P. It has two private data members, x and y and the constructor takes those values and makes the correct assignments. Then in terms of the output, the print method, let's assume, prints this in some, you know, in a Cartesian coordinate format. So the output will be 3, 4. So how would we do this using pointers? So first of all, to declare a pointer to a point object, I use the type and then I add the asterisk. I'm just going to use P again as a pointer and I'm going to set it to an initial value of null. So here in memory I've got my pointer that points to null and it is named P. So to dynamically allocate a point object, I'm again going to use the new operator. And I follow it with the type and then the parameters for the constructor, if there are any. What new is going to do is it's going to go out into memory. It's going to allocate space for a point object. It will also allocate space for its private data members, in this case X and Y. Then it passes the parameters to the constructor that I've called. The constructor executes. And this constructor makes the assignments to the private data member. Then the new operator re returns the address of where that object resides in memory. And I can use that in an assignment and I can make P point to this new dynamically allocated point object. And once that assignment happens, my pointer P will point to this dynamically allocated point object in memory. Now if I want to call the print method, I might be tempted to write something like this. And this is going to be a syntax error. What I'm saying here is I'm using exactly the same syntax, but P here is a point. Here, P is a pointer. It's a pointer to a point. This pointer doesn't have the print method. It's the actual object it points to that has the print method. What I need to do is I need to dereference the pointer. That will give me a point object, and then that object is the one that has the print method. Now this is still not going to work. It won't work because the select operator has a higher precedence than the dereference operator. So 
we're still evaluating this expression, and that's giving a syntax error. We have to use parentheses to alter the order of evaluation. Now we dereference the pointer first. That gives us this point object. Then we can select the print method and invoke it. And if we run this fragment, we'll get the same output 3-4. This syntax is a little cumbersome. There's a more convenient way of writing it, so I'm going to comment this out. We start with the pointer, and the other dereference operator is the dash followed by the greater sign. This kind of looks like an arrow, which should be easy to remember because you use it with pointers. And now we can invoke the print method. And so what this does is this invokes the print method of the object that the pointer P points to. So it dereferences and then selects the print method of this point object. And finally, because we allocated this point using new, we have to make sure that we deallocate it using delete. And so again, this does not affect the pointer P, it affects the point object that P points to. So this delete operator will delete the object that P points to, which is this point object here. So that's now deallocated. The pointer P still holds the address of where the point object was, and then when we leave the scope of the block where we declared P, then it will be deallocated, this pointer. And then all of the memory that we utilized will be released or freed.